Hello and welcome to Finishing Touch. My name is Riley James. This is a podcast via the State Soccer Network. You can check out the website, statesoccernetwork.com. And now we have a mobile app you can download on the iOS devices via the App Store. Today's show is sponsored by Steezy. From comfort to function, Steezy thought of it all with their brand new React No Show and Adapt Essential Crew. Steezy, the athletic sock for you. Keep moving forward. Today on the show, on the phone, because we had some problems pre-show with some connections issues. Derek Waldeck, a national champion at Stanford, 60th overall pick by FC Dallas, 2020 MLS Super Draft, and now the central defensive midfielder for North Texas. Derek, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me today, Riley. Obviously, this is a show talking to professional athletes, coaches, and so many different people about making that next step to – play either college soccer professional soccer you had a fantastic career at stanford and now that's a very smart school so i want to talk about kind of the academic first when you were being recruited to play at stanford obviously a very high profile school for academics how how nervous were you that you're going to meet the academic side as well as the, the athletic side yeah it was uh, definitely a concern of mine when i first arrived on campus at stanford um, through the whole process of applying to Stanford uh, throughout my junior and even into my senior year of high school um, as I was working with our coaching staff at Stanford and all of that, trying to figure out what different things I needed to, you know, add on to my, uh, to strengthen my resume a little bit. Um, I had to add taking an AP class um, that I wasn't planning on taking my senior year. I had to retake my SATs and ACTs a number of times. Um, in order to reach the, the scores that they had said I needed to be at in order to increase my chances of being admitted. So I think right off the bat, I, I definitely felt like, oh, maybe maybe I don't quite belong here from an academic front. You know, I obviously felt from a soccer side of things like I belonged and I fit in. Um, but when you're surrounded by, you know, the best minds and the best brains in the world, um, it can be a little daunting. So I think that definitely took a little bit of time for me to get used to. Um, but it, it didn't, it wasn't too far into my time there that I quickly realized how much the community around me wanted to see me succeed. Um, and that was one of the best parts of Stanford, to be honest, when it comes to academics is um, so many people want to see their peers, their, their roommates, their dorm mates, their classmates whoever it is, they want to see them succeed. Um, it is competitive, but at the end of the day, people are more than willing to go out of their way to help people um, and to do whatever they can to help their neighbor be as successful as possible. So that was really um, helpful and beneficial for me during my time there. You, you talk about kind of the community feel of Stanford. Obviously, you grew up in California, so making the move from where you're from to obviously going to school over there. What was that like? And did it help you to stay in the state of California to, to help the development to play there? Yeah, it was great being able to stay in California. Um, I actually grew up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I lived there until I was about 13 years old. Um, and then my family has been in Southern California for the past 10 years now. Um, and so I felt like in terms of location and distance, I thought Stanford was a great place where it was about five hours uh, to drive, maybe a 45 minute to an hour long flight away from my home from where my parents and my brothers were. So it, it felt like, you know, I had my own space and my own, you know, kind of ability to become the person I wanted to be away from my family. Um, but also, you know, they were kind of right right next door if I needed them, um, if I needed to go home for a weekend, if they wanted to come up to watch games uh, on campus, they were able to do so. Um, so it's kind of perfect being able to be far enough away, but not too far that, you know, you feel isolated from your family uh, as you kind of navigate some of the challenges and difficulties of college. So I love being able to just kind of head up north um, and continue my, my soccer and my education up there. So the recruitment process to be able to get to Stanford, obviously we talked about the academic side, the athletic side of things. Uh, what is one thing or maybe multiple things that they told you to maybe improve on or that coaches told you to improve on to maybe increase your your recruitment stock trying to get into a Pac-12 school? Yeah. Um, do you mean just from the athletic side or academic side as well in terms of recruitment? The athletic side of things. 
the athletic side. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of my conversations with the staff prior to or throughout the recruiting process were just kind of about learning to adapt to the style um, that we played in at Stanford. And um, the more that I would be able to adapt once I got there and the more that I would be able to prepare properly um, and just have a good understanding of what our coaches were looking for, the better my chances were always going to be um, of being able to arrive on campus, try to push for, for minutes right away as a freshman. Um, and then just kind of had to see where we, where we went from there. So a lot of our focus at Stanford was, um, for new guys coming in, just making sure that you're fit. Um, you're eager to, to learn the style, um, and that you're coachable more than anything, you know, it's, it's never expected for a freshman to come in and, um, you know, know all the ins and outs of a system from a tactical standpoint or anything like that. Every coach um, and every program has their different tactics, their different ideas about how to do things. Um, so I think one of the biggest things that I was told both by coaches and by players who were already on the team was just come in with an open mind, um, be ready to work, be, be ready to accept if coach moves you to a position you might not be comfortable in or maybe you haven't played before. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if you're willing to approach it with the right mindset, you, you'll give yourself the best opportunity um, to get on the field. Now, one of the, the few freshmen expected to come in and do anything at Stanford is Andrew Luck. But the, the main thing I want to uh, focus on with you, obviously getting to Stanford and having that this role kind of thrust upon you as, as learning in the fly as a freshman and, and, and kind of adapting to a bunch of different things the the push and the adaptation to play college soccer as opposed to high school soccer how different is it what's the level of physicality what how how what are the biggest differences between high school and and, and college soccer yeah I, I think the the first one that jumps to my mind is the speed of play no doubt there's a jump um when you're going from whether you're playing in high school club soccer academy soccer um, wherever you're at while you're in high school, when you get up to the, the college level, um, guys are a little bit quicker, they're more athletic, they're stronger. Um, so your decisions and the game overall just, they, they move a lot, a lot more quickly um, than, than they did at, at the previous level. Um, for me too, I'm, I'm a smaller guy, you know, I only stand about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, about 150 pounds. So I knew I wasn't going to be you know, kind of the enforcer type of player. And I, I had to learn if I'm going to be successful at this level, playing against quick, strong guys, I'm going to have to make sure that my decision making um, allows me to still find ways to be successful. You know, I, I can't, I have to think two, three, maybe even four steps ahead, whereas other guys might be able to think just one step ahead if they're quick enough or athletic enough or strong enough, you know. Um, so I kind of had to, had to take the tools that I've been given and that I've been blessed with and try to find the best way to maximize those. Um, but that was definitely the, the biggest adjustment for me was coming in right away and just feeling a game out. The first time I remember um, I got subbed into a preseason game and just feeling like, you know, within a span of about five minutes, you're out of breath because the game's just moving so quickly. You know, you're trying to scan the field, make the right decisions, but also trying to stay tactically aware of what the team is trying to do. So there's just a, lo a lot of different parts, obviously, um, that all have to be working together. Um, and that, that can take a little bit of adjusting, but I feel like it was something that within a few games, I started to feel more and more comfortable with um, in my freshman year. Hey, uh, smaller guys in soccer. You know, I, I stand at 5'9", you got Diego Rossi at LAFC, you got Sebastian Giovinco, dominated MLS for a long time, and not to mention Lionel Messi are all shorter guys, and they, mm -hmm. they have adapted. It seems like you've done that as well. Obviously, moving on to uh, USL being drafted 60th overall by Dallas, um, taking a California boy and, and, and pushing him over, over down in Texas. How, how was that adjustment? And um, how do, obviously, it, you're still early on in it, but how, how do you think you've adapted to uh, playing in Texas. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been a wild adventure. Um, in my time out here in Texas, I was drafted in January of 2020. Um, and about six weeks after being out here, that's when the pandemic started last year. Um, so I think it's been a very different experience than I'm sure many other draft picks have had over the course 
of the last few years in terms of arriving in a brand new city to a brand new club um, and kind of hitting the ground running. So, um, but all that to say, it, it has been a wonderful experience. I've absolutely fallen in love with the city of Dallas. Um, I, I've been very grateful and you know, forever feel indebted to FC Dallas um, for giving me the opportunity in the first place to come out here and um, to try to prove myself and tell them or show them that, you know, I'm, I'm worth their investment and their draft pick from 2020. Um, so it, it's been, in terms of soccer, a big style change from the way that our team at Stanford played uh, in college. A lot of our style at Stanford was a very direct um, skipping lines type of style in terms of attack. Um, here at FC Dallas, everything we do is possession-based. It's building up out of the back, long sustained possessions, um, counter-pressing right away when we lose the ball. Um, so there definitely have been some differences that it, it took me some time, I think, to adjust to. And um, also positionally, I, I played in the center of midfield. I played out wide in the midfield. Um, in college, but my entire time was spent in the midfield, and I've transitioned to play probably about 90% of my time here in Dallas has been spent at left back, transitioning to that position. Um, so also, you know, not just learning a new style, but also learning a new position um, and just kind of, you know, finding all the little details within that position of what can I do to help in myself improve? How can I stand out? Um, you know, how do I just keep growing a little bit every day? So it, it's been a wild adventure, but like I said, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, the last two years that I've gotten to be out here with FC Dallas and with North Texas playing with their second team. Um, and, you know, in terms of development in the U.S., I don't think there's a club with a better reputation than FC Dallas for developing young talent. Um, so I'm very, you know, very grateful I've gotten to be part of the club and the family here. Derek, I want to talk about success. Obviously, you had... Uh a tremendous time at Stanford with success and Stanford soccer is well noted with uh, with the, what they do on that level. You were then thrust on a championship level team with North Texas who had won the, the league the year before. Can you talk about handling success and, and maybe some advice to some younger guys who are maybe going through that process or will go through that process at some point? Absolutely. Um, Success is, I think, a very tricky word for a lot of people. Um, obviously, there's so many different ways to define success. Um, you know, it's for me, it's not just about wins and losses. Obviously, the business we are in, wins and losses, yes, they are massive. Um, but for me personally, I, I try to define success on a day to day basis um, by questioning myself and asking the question simply of, did I improve today? Did I make strides towards becoming a better player today? Um, you know, I think so often people kind of get caught up in the long-term out, outcome goals, if you will, um, you know, be it win a championship, get a first team contract, whatever it might be, which is awesome. You know, like you, you definitely do want to have those goals that you can kind of, you know, hang up on the wall and say, hey, this is what I'm, I'm going for. But day by day, um, if, you, if you lose sight of, the little things that, that are so crucial, um, you're never going to be able to reach those long-term outcome goals. Um, and so I think it's really important. This is how I've, my mindset has shifted um, over the last few years is to say, hey, if, if I have these big goals, great, but let's hang them up. Let's not worry about them because I just have to worry about the day that's before me right now. I need to worry about going into training today, preparing as well as I can. Um, and then while I'm in training, giving everything that I can to become the best player, to try to, you know, reach the standards that I've set for myself and that our team has set for us as players, but then also to try to push beyond those standards. Um, and if you look at success that way, uh, I think it's very easy to, to see yourself being successful in those, those little, the details of life and of soccer. Um, and then all of a sudden when you've built up a few days worth or a few weeks worth, they turn into months worth of success. Um, and then before you know it, all those little details that you're working to fine tune each and every day, you see them coming out and you see yourself benefiting on the field. Um, and before you know it, you might be putting yourself in those situations where you might be leading a team to a championship or you might be part of a championship team. 
Um, but it's my advice, I think, for for listeners and young players is to set those goals, but don't don't let them hang over your head so much that you lose sight of of the short term here and now today, um, and just focusing on giving your best and asking yourself, how can I grow in this moment, in this day, in this training session? Derek, that was absolutely wonderful. And we'll, we'll go ahead and end on that. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, obviously, good luck with North Texas for the rest of the year. And we hope to see you in MLS sometime soon. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hi, right, thank you so much for watching the show. We really do appreciate it here at the State Soccer Network. We also have some socials for you to check out. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at State Soccer Network. And at the State Soccer Network, we also have a website, statesoccernetwork.com, as you can see right there. It's available in the show description with a direct link to find out how to sign up your local high school soccer team in contests and events to win prizes. We also have an iOS app available in the App Store. Thank you so much for watching the things that we make. It really does mean a lot. And remember, the State Soccer Network a place where you can become the next great American talent.